On behalf of my organization, the Perry Institute for Marine Science, I want to welcome you to this webinar. And of course, you are welcome to explore our web page and follow us in all the different social media platforms. I'm a senior scientist in charge of the core program within the Perry Institute for Marine Science. I have been working and studying corals and coral reefs for over 20 years. And right now, my main project is this disease that I'm going to introduce to you during this, this talk. So the Perry Institute for Marine Science is an NGO working in the Caribbean and mainly in the Bahamas. Our mission is to preserve coral reefs, coastal habitats, and vital fisheries throughout the Bahamas and the Caribbean while working with local communities and unlock and implement sustainable solutions. To accomplish our mission, we have different programs and projects that include studying all marine coastal marine ecosystems, such as mangroves, seagrass beds, and of course, coral reefs. But we go beyond that. We study fish populations and fishery status. And for us, community education and capacity building are transversal to all our programs and projects. Although we at PIMS do great things, I really believe it. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a disease that is killing corals in the Caribbean. And of course, this is, includes the Bahamian coral reefs. This is the latest disease that is affecting corals. And the disease, as they were saying, is known as stony coral tissue loss disease. This presentation, it's a very general overview of the disease. And of course, I'm going to show you how spread is right now, as far as we know, in the Bahamas. But I do hope that in the future, we can have more webinars and some in-person training so everyone that wants to be working with us can learn to identify this disease, how it's affecting Bahamian coral reefs, and how we can work together to save our corals and coral reefs. Before I start talking about the stony coral tissue loss disease, it is important to note that coral reef diseases are not new. Caribbean coral reefs have been affected by diseases for decades. We have more than 22 diseases described. Stony coral tissue loss disease, the latest one. Due to this high number of coral diseases, the region is known as a disease hotspot, meaning that in this area, coral reef diseases are fairly common. However, in most of the cases, and it's not the case for stony coral tissue loss disease, these diseases affect just a very few species. The other factor that is important to clarify when we are talking about coral diseases is that it's a little different that it is diseases for us. Like you can die of a disease when you have like a human disease, you can we can die of that. But many, in, with many diseases, we can still live on. With coral diseases, in most of the cases, corals die when they have the disease. So that is just some clarifications that I think they're important to make. So what is a stony coral tissue loss disease? Is the latest disease that is affecting corals. It was first described in 2014 off Miami and since then it has spread not only throughout the entire Florida track but is now affecting at least 26 Caribbean countries. In the Bahamas it was first observed at the end of 2019 in Grand Bahama and this disease, without a doubt, it's the greatest immediate threat to Bahamian coral reefs. And we need to learn more about it and understand what are the effects and how we can be involved as much as we can. This is a, an image from what is called the Stony Coral Tissue Loss Disease Dashboard that the Atlantic and Gulf Reef Assessment aka AGRA, has for the disease. It shows how it has spread in the Caribbean, which country has confirmed the disease 
in what year, the number of coral species affected, as you can see, there is 34, how many countries are applying antibiotic treatments and how many countries are engaged in rescue strategies. And I will explain a little about that in a minute. In a workshop I just attended last month, uh, the scientific director of AGRA, Dr. Judy Lang, was saying that they expected the list of countries to be 28 between December and January this year. So this is just spreading really, really fast and it's affecting many, many countries. One of the problems that we have with every disease, especially with coral diseases, is identifying the pathogens or pathogens responsible for causing all the diseases. We have more than 22 diseases in the Caribbean, and right now we only know or have learned which are the pathogens for four of those 22 diseases. So for stony coral tissue loss disease, it's almost the same as with many of the diseases. We have no idea who, what is causing the disease. We know for the most recent studies that they suggest that it's a virus that affects the algae that live inside the coral, the symbiont. And when that virus affects the symbiont, that causes a disruption. And from that disruption, a secondary infection caused by bacteria develops and the coral dies. We do know that the disease is waterborne. And now we have more and more evidence supporting that the theory of the ballast water transported by the big ships is the main source of the disease from one country to the other. And it is important to say that this is not the cause like within the, like in an island like we have in, in the Bahamas, like New Providence, probably it came from a, from a ship coming from another place that had the disease, but then it started to spread by many different factors, including uh, fishing boats, diving boats, touristic boats, whatever, and fish and other vectors. So why are we saying that this disease is the major threat right now for Bahamian coral reefs? So what we know is that stony coral tissue loss disease affects more than half of the coral species. And more importantly, these species are the main coral reef builders that we have in Bahamian waters. It spreads rapidly in water and the advance rate in a colony, it's about 10 times higher than other white diseases. When it arrives to the reef, the spread between corals take a couple of months and it spreads really quickly between neighbor reefs. And from New Providence, we know from data that we collected in 2020, the spread was about 50 meters per day. That is about 160 feet per day. So when it arrived to a reef area, it persists for a really long time. And for example, in Florida, that has been in some reefs since 2014, the disease is still present and is still killing and affecting the remnant corals after all these eight years. This slide is just to show you the high number of species affected by stony coral tissue loss disease. So in red, you have on your left are the species that are the highly susceptible species. And that means they are the first to get infected by the disease and they die in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. In orange, it shows the mid-high susceptible species. So they start to get the disease and it takes a little longer to kill the corals. In yellow are the mid-low susceptible species. And in, in green, what you can see is the species that are not susceptible at all. So as you can see, the number of species that are susceptible are three quarters of all the species that are the most common Caribbean and Bahamian coral species. 
So if a coral colony gets infected, it is more likely that it will die in the following weeks after getting the disease. But this slide, what I want to show you is how medium-sized brain corals get the disease and how it is spraying uh, throughout the colony in one month. So in the top photos, in the three top photos, you can see a symmetrical brain coral and it has two different lesions. And within that month, it kills more than 50% of the colony. And when I'm talking about uh, medium-sized colonies, I'm talking about colonies that in diameter, they have between 50 to 80 centimeters. In the three bottom uh, photos, what we can see is the groove brain coral. And as you can see, it has already in the first photo when we had like our first picture that is the day zero, uh, almost 40% of the colony is already dead. And as it advanced, at least 90% of the colony is already dead. So it's spreading really fast and killing corals that have been taking about 20 years to grow in less than a month it has been killing them so last month in this workshop about the stony coral tissue disease that i was attending this mexican researcher that has been studying the effects of the disease in the mesoamerican reef showed us a similar figure to this one and this is just to explain how deadly this disease is. So on your left, you have the human population before COVID-19. And on your right, you have the population of a coral species known as pillar coral before the stony coral tissue disease. Both human and corals were very happy and healthy before either COVID-19 and stony coral tissue disease appeared. When both diseases are endemic, and that means that have infected or affected the majority of the population, we have this. So most of the humans go to the disease, but only a low percentage represented uh, by the red belt in the last human on your bottom right died. And another small percentage haven't had COVID-19 that is represented on the black human on your up left corner. Uh, for the pillar coral, this, the mortality was another story. In red are all the corals that died as a result of the multitudinal disease. In yellow is the small percentage that are still getting the disease and similar that in like black is a small percentage of corals that are still living or this. So the, the future is grim for many coral species. And how this is affecting the community, and this is a case specific for the Bahamas, for Mugan Bahama, is what I'm going to show you, you here. So this is what we call a photo mosaic. This image is created by thousands of corals taken in the same place. This is a shallow coral community in Grand Bahama. It was dominated by hundreds of brain corals. And these pictures were taken in March, 2020. The disease is already in the area. So I don't know if you see my cursor but you can see some corals that are already with the disease. So you have like the living tissue, you have the lesions of the disease, but most of the corals in this image, in this community by March, 2020 are alive and they're looking most of them healthy. This is the same area, 13 months later in April, 2021, most of the brain corals have died and from the few remaining, a couple of them have already the disease. Uh, so about 90% of the brain corals have died in a little over a year. This is very grim because actually this is what is happening in many of the reefs in the Bahamas. So 
for you to maybe to see it more clearly, these are the same images on the left are the is the image of March 2020. And on your right is the image um, from April 2021. And you have here in orange red all the brain corals that were alive at each time. So the number of corals alive reduced drastically by the stony coral tissue loss disease. The major impact of stony coral tissue loss disease is not how it is killing corals, but its effects on the coral reef ecosystem services and the people that depend on these ecosystems. Some of the ecosystem services are related to food security by providing habitat for economically important fish and shellfish. They can be as well amazing landscapes for tourism and recreation. A great number of compounds right now are used by the um, medical industry to produce new medicines. And these ecosystems play an important role by protecting the coastline by acting as a barrier from storm damage. We know from studies done in Florida and Mexico that coral reefs are collapsing and in the midterm these ecosystem services are going to be affected. We need to act in different ways to stop reefs from collapsing. So for the Bahamas, coral reefs are one of the most important environmental assets. As we know, the, the Bahamas depends largely on coral reefs. So the Bahamas has the largest coral reef area that any other country in the region has really high bio biodiversity. And of course, the value because it depends on the tourism and most of the economic um, assets that we have is it's up to 1.35 million per square square kilometer per year. The, there are many threats, but the main threats are two, climate change and right now stony coral tissue loss disease in the short term. This map show you where stony coral tissue loss disease has been confirmed in the Bahamas. These islands are Grand Bahama, Berry Island, Eleuthera, New Providence, Rose Island, South Andros, Long Island, North of Exuma, San Salvador, and Abaco. Even though it's not in the map, but we can confirm that the disease is in Cat Island Reefs. And there are reports for Little Nagba that we are going to try to confirm this year. The main question is, what can we do about the stony coral tissue loss disease? The most important one is stop or reduce spread. So we have ballast water, that is the water that the commercial ships or the cruise ships use for weight. So the ballast water, usually what you have to do is you have to get rid of the ballast water before coming to an island, to a port. And usually it's about between 25 to 50 miles that they have to get rid of the ballast water. If the big ships do it in that way, that will prevent the disease to reach our reefs in the shallow areas. Uh, the other thing is to pump and disinfect bilge water. And bilge water is the one for smaller vessels, like commercial vessels that we use for fishing, for diving. So if you're in an area where you have the disease, before going to a new area, pump the bilge water in that site. Don't go to the other area and pump in that new area because, but most likely, you are just transferring the pathogen from a reef that has it right now to a reef that probably doesn't have it. One is related to disinfecting all the diving gear. So if you do diving, snorkeling, fishing, you have to disinfect all your gear. Very soon, actually, we will be giving a webinar of how to disinfect all your gear. There are different things, of course, that you can use. 
All the soaps that have sodium percarbonate powder are the ones that are allowing country. There are other ways to do it. So we will create a webinar that we will share with you all about this. The other thing will be treating coral. The disease is actually caused, as far as we know, by a virus, but this creates a bacterial infection that is the one that is killing the corals. So right now, with all the research made by different researchers, especially in the US, we know that applying antibiotics are very effective to stop the disease. So it doesn't cure the coral because the coral is already dying, but it stops the disease and it's actually very effective. So we at Teams, we have done under, of course, research permits granted by DPP. We have been applying antibiotics to corals in some prioritized reef areas. Unfortunately, we cannot treat every single coral. We cannot treat every single reef. It's not only expensive, but it takes a lot of time. It's time consuming, so we can do so much. But this is something that we think that we have to continue to do, especially in sites that are important in the different family islands, in reefs that are visited by, by tourists, by divers, or that they have some, some value, like Mermaid Reef in, in Awako, that is unique in the Caribbean. The other thing, and this is something that many countries are starting to do, is developing inland coral rescue facilities. And this is a way to preserve genetic diversity. So this means to have, like you can see in this photo, raceways with hundreds of different corals that you can keep in a closed system and you can keep them safe from the disease. The idea with this is that you can get resistant corals that you have identified in areas that are, have been affected by the disease for many months or even years, and then select those survivors so you can reproduce them and use them in future coral restoration pro programs. We want to invite everyone to report any sighting, or even if you see something that you have no idea, just send a photo if you can. There is the address there, and of course, web link. We can send an email with that where to report it. It will be great if we can have a photo, but if you don't have a camera, that's okay. What will be really a most is the location in terms of GPS coordinates, because then we can go to that exact site and just see the corals. And of course, if you don't have the, the location, but you know how to get there, we can coordinate and go with you there. We want you to learn more about the stony coral tissue loss disease. And for this, we are planning to do more webinars and in-person trainings so people can identify stony coral tissue loss disease, coral species. And if research permits are allowed, we can do some assessments and treatments. And of course, support all the local NGOs in Abaco. You have many amazing ones like Friends of the Environment and of course BNT and many others just support them and support us. And I'm going to just leave you with a video that we did with Miss Universe Bahamas, Angel Cartwright, who is our conservation ambassador to raise awareness about the disease. are the backbone of the Bahamas. They're the life source of our fisheries, our tourism economy, and our culture. But our corals are in crisis. A deadly and relentless flesh-eating disease is killing our corals and threatening our very way of life. It's called Stony Coral Tissue Loss Disease, or Skittle D for short. It's like watching something straight out of a horror movie. I've seen Skittle D up close with my very own eyes. Little by little, it creeps along and tears the living tissue right off of our reefs. We're losing our biggest and oldest corals in a matter of months, and if we don't act soon, we'll be left with nothing but coral graveyards. It's something we should all be extremely concerned about.
Perry Institute for Marine Science is leading the fight against Skittledy in the Bahamas. They have divers in the water all the time, studying the disease and treating corals as fast as they can to slow its spread. But as a nation, we need to do more. In an era marked by climate change and extreme weather, coral reefs are our first line of defense. They supply our food, support our livelihoods, and buffer our shorelines against ferocious hurricanes and floods. That's why I'm calling on all fishers, divers, and ocean lovers to take action to stop this deadly disease. We can begin by learning to identify Skittle D on the water. When you see the disease, report it to the Perry Institute. Second, don't be the reason Skittle D spreads between reefs. This disease spreads easily through water, so if you're diving or snorkeling, be sure to disinfect your gear before traveling to a new spot. Not a diver? No problem. Us Bahamians, we all have a fisher in the family, and we know someone who loves the salt life. Use your voice, spread the word, and share this video. Let's save our corals together. And finally, we want to thank our partners in the Bahamas for all the support, like the Bahamas National Trust. But especially, we want to thank our founders and donors. Without them, what we have been doing in the last couple of years within PIMS wouldn't be possible. With their support, we've been able to grow our team. And now we can upscale our impact on tackling this disease. So thank you very much.